So the, the use case of how these vocabularies are used, the system has a metadata model and this includes a number of these vocabularies. And, and this is because of the CESTA data catalog and, and European question bank that, that would like to have harmonized and standardized metadata. Um, yes. And then, of course, then the metadata providers do need these vocabularies in their different languages. Uh, and the CBS is a tool for, for maintaining such multilingual vocabularies. And so this is a, a screenshot of a pop-up. So if, if you created a new version of a Finnish vocabulary and then, then you're, you're editing the, the, the concept, or code translation, as we call it. And this is just a normal, you see what you are translating, and you can translate the bits that you can translate, and then you can translate what you can translate. And then uh, this is to help to produce the change log that you have to choose. You have to choose uh, what you changed. So this helps to produce the, the yes. And the, uh, Initial goal translation pop up is similar just without the change notes. And then, uh, what the result of all this translation work is that, like I showed you, the HTML export of, of the English vocabulary of mode of collection, it's a longer the vocabulary, but the screenshot only could have the first. So, in the HTML, you can switch between language versions. So, this is the Norwegian one. So this is again in Norway, someone is doing the documentation work. So and, and looking at oh, what kind of mode of collection should I use? So they say have this table in, in Norwegian. So this is the aim what we are aiming at. And so at Finnish Social Science Data Archive, because funnily enough, so many people speak Finnish. So we produce dataset descriptions in both Finnish and in English for all datasets. And first the Finnish one is produced and then we, the, it's translated into English. And we have put a, a bit of code that when, when you have the XML template to start the English, English translation that you don't need to translate them again, but, but using these multilingual vocabularies, the system already translates them automatically. So the benefits of this is that it's less work and less mistakes. And like I said, to, to get gain a wider audience, we really need to have these data set descriptions also in English. And just this is a and the screenshot where the first one is the XML description produced in Finnish. And I just took a screenshot of three uh, control vocabulary elements. And the second one is the same data set. And this is what the translator sees when they are doing the, they are translating into the XML. They don't have to actually do anything because the, the code behind has already provided the English versions of these. Of these. And then as you can see, the, the long, if, if you can see, the longitudinal trend repeated cross-section is, is the code, the, the code value that is the same. So if, it, if that is introduced into the XML, that remains the same. And the ultimate goal, of course, is this is just a screenshot of the same data set description in the, in the data catalog. On the left is the, the Finnish one, and on the right is the, is, is the English one. So, of course, there's also the titles and abstract and all the other information, but just for describing the methods. So this is what we aim at, that we have the Finnish and the English and, and to produce it as quickly as possible. I just have to say that in this screenshot on the left, there's a bit of bug in the data catalog still. So all information within the textual field should be finished, but we will amend that presently. So that was my very short use case. Mm -hmm.